Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. We're at the Liverpool Olympia here for Price Fighter, Lightweights 2 and Rocky Fielding. Uh, it's been a, quite an exciting night, Eddie Hearn. A fun night, you know. Um, a lot of people packed in here tonight. Everyone left with a smile on their face. Price Fighter was great. The atmosphere was brilliant. Lots of different pockets from of fans from different areas. And you know, deserve it winning in Flanagan. I, I thought he might be a little bit of a dark horse, um, but hardly lost the round. You know, boxed really well. And um, Rocky just finishing it off with, with a good stoppage of Carl Dilks there. Obviously, everyone was talking about Matthews, Crawler, Sykes, some people, but like you said, Flanagan and Tommy Coyle as well, a few people tips as outsiders for the tournament. So, I mean, where does that leave you as a promoter when someone like Flanagan, unbeaten from Manchester, where does it leave you? What can you do for him? It's difficult, you know, it's difficult when they win 32 grand because now sometimes, you know, they've just got to remain level headed. I've seen it before with people who won 32 grand in prize fight, and all of a sudden it's difficult to take. 10 or whatever for your next fight but you know he's got to keep cracking on um he's 18 and 0 now and you know he's got some great exposure tonight so he should be looking at you know a, a british title shot he's, he's normally a super featherweight um he looks strong at the weight tonight you know um very fit hardly out of breath but you know the other guys i, f I felt that um gary sykes beat uh, sorry tommy core beat gary sykes in the first quarter final i thought he was a bit unlucky um and the others you know crawler boxed well in the first two run out of steam a little bit and derry you know, battled hard forever. The uh, you know the, the brave fighter, and um, you know they'll come again. I, I, I stressed before: if you lose in prize fight, it's not the end of the world. You know, if you win, you just you, you catapult yourself into new territories. But losing is not the end of the world. You know, you're keeping yourself busy, you're keeping yourself fresh. You're getting great exposure on TV and all the promos, and and you know that everyone who took part tonight will, will crack on from here, and and that's from top to bottom. Matchroom has a new English super middleweight champion in Rocky Fielding. Uh, a, a very good performance and stops Carl Dilks with an emphatic finish. Yeah, I mean it's difficult for Rocky because obviously this was this was geared up as Rocky and the and the prize fighters. You know he's topping the bill here on a, on a Sky show. You know for the last two years he's been in the wilderness boxing six rounders against journeymen and all of a sudden he's had one fight in Sheffield and projected him straight into an English title shot. So. You know, he had a lot of pressure on his shoulders tonight and he was a bit nervous for early doors. He held a little bit too much. But when he let the shots go, he's accurate and he does punch hard. You know, I'm chuffed for him because he's got a mat he ordered a thousand tickets for tonight and we could only give him four hundred. Um, he's got a huge following in Liverpool and you know, we're looking to come back here in February to do a massive show and I want him to be a big part of that. I want to try and get him out in November or December on one of those shows, defend the English title and then have a big fight at the Echo because you know he's got a massive following and if we can do a thousand at the Echo and you know, Tony Bellew's there and our new signing, Callum Smith's there and, you know, we could do a really monster show. Potentially, how good can Rocky Fielding be? Do you think he'll go all the way? It's too early to say, you know, he's, he's definitely going to fight for British titles, you know, um, he's not far from that now, he's probably, you know, 12 months away from fighting for British titles, but he's, he's still learning, you know, he's experienced a lot, he won prize fighter, but he's learning all the time and the key is just to keep letting them learn, keep getting them learning, build the confidence, keep learning in the gym, keep learning in the ring, keep learning the big nights, you know, these kind of nights now, that, that's done a lot for his career, you know, not just in terms of the result, but in terms of the confidence, be, being part of a big show and, and headlining a big show, next time he goes into arena for a big fight, he'll be ready and he'll be a lot more confident, he can settle down a lot more, he can let his shots go quicker. Um, but you know, it's, it, there's no rush for Rocky Field, and he's still a young, young, young lad. Um, we want to make a couple of defences of the English title, get the confidence going, really, you know, improve as a fighter, and then look for a British title shot in the middle of next year. And who know that'll be Kenny Anderson, Paul Smith, Tony Dodson, all those kind of fights for Rocky are there in the next 12 months. But you know, he deserves tonight, and I know he was he was very nervous leading up to the fight. And again, once he let the shots go. A game, Cole Dilks as well. A lot of people, you know, he was motivated for this fight. He wanted to give it a real big crack, and he looked he looked decent for the first few rounds. And then Rocky just wore him down, and and you know, it was a great stoppage in the end. Um, just going back to the prize fight, what else could you do with prize fight? Because I think he's trying to mix it up. Obviously, he's taken it all over the country, and he's taken it to Ireland, and I think you've had international prize. What, what else is there? Anything left to actually mix it up, so to speak? Yeah, you always have to keep thinking. You have to keep innovating. You know, you have to listen to the fans on the forums, on Twitter. You know, anyone who's got the ideas, who loves their boxing, you want to listen to. You have to keep changing things, you know, whether that's an international format, whether that's England versus USA, which we're looking at. You know, I like the domestic prize fighters where, you know, good quality fighters. The good thing about tonight was they were probably eight lightweights that were in the top ten in the country. So you're going to get quality as well. Sometimes it can look a bit sloppy, you know, but sometimes with prize, people got to understand what prize fighter is. 
You know, it's a fun format, a fast, action-packed format that the casual fans embrace. Now, I know there'll be some boxing fans watching this who maybe don't like Prize Fighter, but they've got to understand what it does. It, it reaches a new audience and it delivers to the casual fans. It's helping to grow the sport. It is fun, you know, it's the 2020 of, of boxing, you know, but it delivers, it delivers ratings. We pack venues out and everybody loves it. So we've got to keep going, but we have to keep evolving. You can't let it get stale. And that's, you know, that, that's through the selection process of the fighters. That's through the actual tournament itself, changing the format, tweaks, you know, bringing in some new fighters, some international names. And, you know, you can never stand still because once you stand still, something will become stale. So just got to keep evolving, keep listening to the public and, and trying to deliver, you know, and, and make prize fighters as exciting as ever. I saw an interesting tweet um, about where the concept of prize fighter came. Someone asked you whether it was your dad, and you actually replied with it was someone from the office, one of the lads. Is that true? Yeah, John Wishhausen came up with the idea. I mean, initially, we've, we've, we've seen some events, Last Man Standing events and stuff like that in, in America, and you know, the, the concept just like, looked like it worked. You know, viewers at home, have their attention span is diminishing all the time because they're multitasking. You know, you're not just watching TV anymore. You're gambling on your phone or you're tweeting on your computer or you're reading your Kindle at the same time. So your attention span is becoming limited on, on watching certain shows. So sometimes watching a 12-round fight or a long you know, long night of boxing, for the casual fan, they can't really get their head around that. They like quick fixes, and that's what Prize Fighter does. You turn it on, bang, three minute round, next one's up, next one's up, two semi-finals, final. Wow, it's a quick fix, and it, you know, you don't, you don't have to sit there and intensely watch the show all night. And, and that's the way that a lot of sports are going. You know, you always need your quality boxing championship 12 round fights for the purist and for the boxing fan. But you also need to adapt attract casual fans and that by doing that you need to feed them fast pulse impulsive viewing and that's what prize fighter does that's what 2020 cricket does and sometimes the purists don't like those you know but you know ultimately you have to deliver for the viewer and and create events and concepts that that are evolving as well like the viewers you know mentality for watching shows and like i said that the attention spans for, for casual fans particularly isn't what it was so you've got to deliver fast-paced events um, just a quick note on your next show uh, in Sheffield at the Motorpoint Arena. Uh, tickets still available for Kelbrook and Hector Salvi Saldivia. Yeah. Is it Sal Saldivia? Saldivia. Yeah, Hector Saldivia. That's that's going well. We're gonna. We had about five and a half, six thousand in there for Carson Jones. I think we'll have more like seven or eight in. Jamie McDonald was here tonight. He's done a lot of tickets. Um, Kenny Anderson's fighting. Robin Reed, Cowie fires out. Scotty Cardle, Martin Ward. They're all out. It's going to be a great show. Come on down, Sheffield Arena is a beautiful arena and Kel Brook is about two or three pounds overweight with two weeks to go. He is looking like an absolute machine and you will see a different Kel Brook than anyone's ever seen in that ring and I think he's going to dismantle Saldivir and make a real statement to the world. And, um, stunning first round KO for Scotty Cardle in Blackpool last night at the Winter Gardens. We were there. It was um, it's progressing really nicely. Him and Joe Gallagher are doing a fantastic job, aren't they? He is. Yeah, he was a bit frustrated in Belfast. I wasn't very happy with him and his performance, and he knows that. And he wasn't happy with himself. Just got frustrated. Went in last night. Did a really classy job. Beautiful body shot. Knocked the guy out in the first round. And Cardles fought six times in four or five months. You know, and he's going to end up fighting nine times in seven or eight months. You know, but this is this is what we want to do for these young kids moving forward. You have to continually give them the opportunity, let them earn the money, let them travel all across the, the the country and hopefully the world, learning, fighting in big arenas on big cards, and they're going to progress really quickly. These GB boys are blessed to have s such a great grounding and experience at that level in Sheffield. When they turn pro, they're like 10, 12, and 0 already. Cal Yafi, Martin Walker, Callum Smith unbelievable talents these are the future of British boxing and we've got them all at Matron all right Eddie Hearn just finally um, I was referred to this weekend as Eddie Hearn's bitch uh, which was charming and um, but I just wanted to say thank you very much for your hospitality because you've I've been on my own this week and it's been difficult but you've made things very easy and I'm not saying that as a I'm, I don't need to suck up to you you, you have to say that because I'm giving you a lift home <laughs> so what else are you gonna say now listen um, Thanks for coming, mate. And any way we can help you out, you, you travel all over the country on these shows. So, you know, and uh, without you, people wouldn't be able to get these interviews, the press conferences, and it makes a difference to the boxing fans. So, yeah, we're well, just uh, doing our thing, and I think uh, the majority of people get what we do. So that's that's good enough for me. And I know you get what we do, which is good enough for me. That's important. People need to see the press conferences. They need to see interviews, and we need to grow the game. And you know, what are you over four million views now on iFilm London? So you're doing a great job. Well done. 
someone called me Mr. Hearn today because I was booked into your room oh, at the jury in. So you've had a great day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's debatable. <laughs> right, Eddie Hearn, listen, I know everyone wants to get home, so thank you very much for talking to Life in London, and I will see you at the Carl Froch Youssef Mech press conference in Nottingham on Thursday. Thursday. You will. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.